Today I'm going to show you how to mount insects in a frame to hang on a wall. Most of the specimens I prepare I put in pinned specimens in drawers for a teaching collection, but uh, sometimes um, people would like to have uh, a butterfly or insects in a frame and hang it on the wall. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This is a frame actually that I made years ago. Um, I'm going to put some butterflies in these for someone I know. I use a foam core on the bottom. Uh, it's paper with foam in the core. And this works really good for pinning the specimens too. And then it fits into the back of the box. There's a groove here. So it fits in nicely. And uh, I think this makes for a good uh, display. So the first thing we're going to do is, this foam core is just white, which is not very appealing as a background. You can use uh, paper. I recommend using good quality art paper, archival paper that isn't going to discolor. And uh, this is sort of off-white, and it's textured like rice paper. And it makes a good background for... Uh, showing off the specimens. So we need to glue this onto the foam core and I use uh, a spray adhesive for that. So I'll just spray some of this adhesive onto this foam core. I'm going to do that outside. Then we'll attach the, the paper to it to start. With the adhesive on the foam core, set the piece of paper where I want it. and then smooth it out. Make sure that it's all pressed into the surface. There. And we'll let that dry for a little bit. I'm going to take a piece of styrofoam and the paper's over the edge of this a little bit. So I'm going to use a razor blade to trim it. We're going to use this uh, styrofoam to uh, arrange the specimens so that we can get them centered on the foam core. So I'm going to take this uh, back piece and I'm going to trace it on the styrofoam. And then we can arrange the specimens here and uh, use measurements to center it to get them properly pa placed on the on the foam core. All right, so these are the specimens that I'm going to use for this frame. This is Papilio blumii. I'm going to take the label off. Keep that. It goes on the back. And we're going to put a little green chrysomelid beetle in the middle. Papilio Paris is going to go above. So that's uh, that's the basic arrangement, and it's easy to move these around on the styrofoam, so we can get them placed here exactly where I want them for the finished the finished frame. Now I can take a ruler 
and I can go to the pin and measure the distance to the edge of the frame both to make sure that the specimen is centered and then once it is I can use this to measure the distances on the foam core so that I can take a pencil and mark the spot where the pin should go through. That way I can uh, get it set up in the way I want it on the foam core. Uh, the foam core is uh, pretty tough, so I don't, it's difficult to put a pin in. So, And I only want to have one hole where the specimen is going to go. I don't want to be punching a bunch of holes in here setting it up. So I'll use this to transfer to this. Now I've measured the uh, width of the pinning base and it's six and a half. So three and a quarter should be the center. And I'm going to mark the center up here too just so I know where it is. And that'll help guide me. So I can use the pin is through the center of the butterfly, so I can use that to kind of line it up with the uh, with this center mark here. So we can get it centered this way. And then of course we have to think about how it will fit vertically as well. And that's just kind of a matter of judgment, I kind of eyeballing it. This one looks like it needs to go over a little bit to be line up with the center up there. That looks pretty close. And once you think you've got them lined up, and uh, I can use the edge of the ruler, just bring it right up to the wing till it like touches the wing right there. And I can read where it's at, and it's an inch and five eighths. Now I can go over to this side and see if it matches up. An inch and four eighths. So it's a little bit closer on this side. One. Yep, so I need to move it this way a little bit. The pin isn't always exactly straight going through. So I'm at an inch and one, two, three, four, and a sixteenth. And I'll go over here and measure it. An inch and one, two, three. That's pretty close. Now we'll try this one down here. Make sure it's straight first. And we'll go from the wing tip to the edge. That's uh, one inch exactly. Now we'll try it over here. Seven eighths. We'll move it over slightly. We'll try that again. We have to make sure that it's lined up that way as well. Okay, we'll try this. Seven eighths. That's an inch. slightly more. If it's a tiny amount off, it's not like anyone's going to really notice, but I like to try and be as accurate as possible. Okay, that's just under an inch. That's just under an inch. Okay, so that one's centered, and that one's centered. And the beetle, I think we can just eyeball that and get it lined up well enough. 
Yeah. And then it looks like it's pretty well distributed top to bottom. I think this is good. I think I'm happy with this. You can figure out where the pin is top to bottom like this first. Two and seven eighths. So I can go from the center of the foam core, which is three and a quarter, which is right there. We can go two and seven eighths, and that should be about where the pin goes, right there. I won't even notice that pencil mark, but I can see it. And so if we put the butterfly on that pencil mark, does that make sense? And yes, it does. Okay, so now we go in three and a quarter, which puts the mark right there. We'll go in from the other side. No, it's a little too far, three and an eighth. So we'll move it slightly. Okay, so that's three and three sixteenths. Now we'll go from this side, three and three sixteenths. Okay, so we have our pin mark right there. That's where the pin goes. Okay. Then um, we need to figure out where the middle one goes. So we'll move this butterfly over. And measure from the bottom again. See how close it is. Four and a half. Okay, so we go four and a half make a little mark. Oops. I'm lining this up on the uh, on the pin for the other one. Four and a half. Alright, so that should go right there. And then now uh, we measure in from the side here. Two and three sixteenths. and three sixteenths. Wow, it's right in the middle. All right. So we'll go to our foam core. Oh, three and three sixteenths. Sorry. Three and three sixteenths. Yeah, that checks out. So needle pin goes right there. Now I have the hole for the butterfly, the hole for the beetle. And now for the top butterfly, we measure the distance from the top. That is one and seven eighths. So we'll go down. I know where the center is here now. So, one and seven eighths from the top. That's where the mark is. And then we'll go from the side. And that is two and a quarter. And we'll measure from the other side too. Sometimes a pin is a little crooked, so that's what's accounting for this difference. Two and a quarter from the left, two and two and an eighth from the left, two and a quarter from the right. I'm going to double check that. Yep, two and a quarter from the right. So here's our top mark. We'll go two and a quarter. 
Oh, sorry, that's three and a quarter. Yep, that's in the right spot. So the top one, the pin should go right there. All right, so now we've got the pin holes in the foam core, so let's put them in and see if it works out. Okay, that's the top one. Get that straight in there. This foam core isn't very thick, so you can't stick the pin in very far. Put the beetle in the middle hole. And we'll put the large swallowtail in the bottom hole. And now we can check that out. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. Now you can see that these specimens are mounted at different heights on the pins. So the next thing we're going to do is figure out how far off the bottom we want the specimen to be, and it'd be nice if they're consistent. Uh, and there's only so much depth in this box, so it can only be so high. I want it up off the bottom. It's nice sometimes to see a bit of a shadow. I try to aim for sort of about the center, and this box is an inch and a half deep, so maybe three quarters of an inch uh, off the surface of this would be a good middle place to, to put it. Um, so, in order to adjust the position on the pin, the specimen has to be loose on the pin. And um, this one's loose for sure. Um, sometimes they're a little stuck on the pin. Usually, if I get a hold of the abdomen, if I just touch the abdomen with my tweezers here and try and spin it on the pin, yeah, that'll loosen it up, and then I can take the tweezers and put it on the top and push down there. Now it's moving. So I'm going to put the pin in place to where it would be, and just give it a measurement like this and see where it's at. Wow, that's three quarters. Right there. All right, that's good. <clears throat> I'm going to set this aside. The beetle should slide on this pin pretty easily. Yep, it will. So I'm going to put the beetle in its position. And uh, measure the height of it. And uh, it's a little high. Bring it down slightly so that sort of the center of the beetle is at about three quarters. Yep, that's that. And now finally this one. Get the uh, butterfly where I think it should be. And uh, let's measure that. The wings are tilted a little. At the edge, it's a little higher than three quarter, but toward the middle, it's more at three quarter. As long as it looks the same as this. So let's put this one in place. Wait. Put this one in place. Put this one in place. Let's see if that looks pretty good. Yeah. I don't think you can get much better. And then I can take the box just as a test, set it on there, see how it looks. I like it. I think it all lines up really well. Now, we're going to glue the butterfly onto the pin because once we seal this all up we don't want anything moving around 
So I'm going to use my glue applicator and put a dot of glue on the bottom at the where the pin comes out of the insect. And then we don't really need to have this pin sticking out of the top. So I'm going to cut these pins off with side cutters once I get them um, glued in place. And I'm also going to put a little bit of glue right here on the paper to hold the pin in place. Because once this thing's all sealed up, you know, if it gets bumped or knocked around, you don't want the specimen to spin on there because then you have to open it all up to, uh, to readjust it. We don't want to have to do that. Okay, time for the next step.